What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday afternoon to you. You're wondering, hey, it's past three o'clock. B-Boy 45 is still on the air. That's absolutely right, because we have a very special edition of Maya's latest news to keep us, <laughs> me really, in the groove. <laughs> yes! Maya, who do we have with us today? Phil Baker. <gasps> Phil Baker's hanging out with us. Oh my gosh, that's absolutely right. And I need to, oh, oh hold on one second. I'm almost there. Get over here to this camera here. Oh, there he is! <laughs> Phil, how are you doing today, man? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Hello, Denver. Hello, <laughs> Phil! Thanks for joining us for Maya's show. Maya, take it away, my friend. Okay, so um, you grew up in here in Denver. Um, so what took you to Hollywood, and what was your first big break? Uh, well, that's a great question to start off with, Maya. Thank you. It's really great to, to be on your show, and I just want to say hello to everybody there in Denver. I grew up in Denver, in southeast Denver, um, not too far from where your hospital is. So uh, I'm glad I'm not there today. I guess it's pretty hot. It's not that hot here in California. But um, how did I get started? Well, when I was a kid, I did a lot of plays in school, and so I, acting was really my first thing. I also did some writing. I like to do writing in school, and I also wrote some plays in school. So um, I eventually went on to study acting at a, at a university in Pittsburgh called Carnegie Mellon University, and then uh, I became an actor for a couple of years, and I did some theater Um and then I decided, I was living in New York at the time, I decided I was going to move to Los Angeles and I had an interest in writing. And so I started writing sample scripts for movies and TV shows and then after a while, things started happening for me. I started working on TV shows and I've now been doing it for about uh, 25 years. Oh, wow, that's so cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um yeah, so uh, what got you into writing? I think I just, I, I liked reading when I was a kid, although I remember I would read the same book over and over again, which was about the NFL. I was a big Broncos fan at the time, and I'm Wait. still a big Broncos okay, fan. Okay, good. You said like, was. I got a little nervous. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, still still a big Broncos fan. Um <laughs> In fact, uh, we, we had uh, season tickets to the old Mile High Stadium. And so, I, you know, I, I, I was interested in reading about sports. And I guess just being in English class and having to write uh, essays and stories, which I know a lot of kids don't like to do, but I was one of those kids that did like to do it. And so I just thought, it, it would be a fun thing to do, I, you know, since somebody who has always liked stories, and then I thought maybe it would be fun to tell stories, too. Um, and then I should also say, as a kid, I did watch a lot of TV. TV back in the olden days when I was a kid was very different than today, so I think that's part of how I became interested in becoming a TV writer, was watching TV. Oh, cool. Um... So what what inspired Good Luck Charlie? Um, that was inspired by one of the people at the Disney Channel, whose name was also Phil. Um, it wasn't me. My name is Phil. Uh, Phil is a great name, um, as is Maya. And uh, I, uh, so we were having a meeting, and they said uh, they were we were trying to think up ideas for shows, and this executive said. How about a show that's about a family and they have older kids and then a baby joins the family? And there was something about it that just I really liked. Um, I think because it was about a real family and I like to tell stories about real families and things that real families go through. So that was really the beginning of the idea of Good Luck Charlie. One of the executives came up with the idea, and then my I had a writing partner at the time, and he and I then developed all the characters and the stories. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so how did your partnership with Disney begin? Um, so if you are a TV writer, the way that you get your jobs is you have an agent, and the agent contacts the various studios or producers who might be hiring writers. And so um, in 2008, 
our agent contacted the Disney Channel, and we went in, and we started doing what's called development, which means we started talking to them about creating uh, some new shows. Now, actually, when we first did our development, it was not Good luck, Charlie. It was uh, it was for another show that um, that never happened, and that that actually happens a lot of times in Hollywood and in TV, where you'll come up with ideas for shows, and you might start talking about them, and somebody might actually hire you to write a script for it, and maybe it just doesn't turn out the way you want it, and so it just sort of goes away, and that's what happened with that one. Um, and then later on. Uh, is when we developed Good Luck Charlie when I was getting ready to get to start on a show on the Disney Channel called Sunny with the Chance. I don't know if you remember that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so that's how that's kind of how that got started. Cool. Um so what what inspired Jesse? What inspired Jesse? You know, that is a really good question. Um I I didn't ever work on Jesse, but the good news is I, I'm I'm currently working with people who worked on Jesse. So I know I think I know the answer to the question. And I don't know if you remember there was an actor, there still is an actor named Brad Pitt, and he was yeah. married to a woman named Angelina Jolie, and they adopted a bunch of kids from different countries. And I think that the idea for Jesse came from that idea. Like, let's do a show about a bunch of kids who are adopted into a family and they're from different places. And because in the show, Jesse, you didn't see this, the movie star parent characters very often because that's why they had Jesse, the nanny, so that she could take care of all the kids because the movie star parents were always off making movies. And I think that's, that was the inspiration for Jesse. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you created Good Luck Charlie, and you also wrote for Andy Mack. And, I did. Um, currently, you write for Bunked. Um, do you have any funny stories from the writing room? Um, let's see, funny stories from the writing room. Well, let me tell you a little secret about Writers in the writing room, we are very interested in when lunch is going to happen. <laughs> um, and so uh, actually yesterday, usually our lunch, um, usually they bring us lunch every day, which is a very nice thing. And I would recommend to anybody, if you get a job, try to get a job where they bring you lunch every day. <laughs> it's really great. I can so um, yesterday, our lunch which usually gets delivered about 12.15, we found out it was going to be late at 1 o'clock. So that was, you know, not really a big tragedy, but everybody <laughs> was a little bit upset that we weren't going to be getting our lunch until until that much later. So, Oh, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so have you had a favorite project that you've worked on? Yes, that's an easy question for me to answer, and that would be Good Luck Charlie. That was the first time I, I had been um, a TV writer for about 15 or 16 years by that point. So I had a lot of experience, but I'd never, I'd never been able to co-create and run my own show. And so I felt like it was a great experience. It was fun to get to be in charge and to get to be the head writer of it and decide the stories that we were going to tell. It was fun to get to decide to have the show take place in Denver, my hometown. <laughs> I always hometown. wondered how that was, yeah. Yeah. And uh, also the other little tidbit about Good Luck Charlie is that the main character's name is Teddy. And I actually have a daughter whose name is Teddy. Oh, nice. But, yeah, so we bar we borrowed oh. her first name for the main character, and then later on, she my daughter actually appeared on a couple episodes of Good Luck Charlie as a uh, as a uh, grumpy trick or treater. <laughs> cool. That's so great. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, is there a show that you would love to write for, or is there someone that you would love to collaborate with? Um, that's a good question. 
I've been so fortunate in my career to work with so many great writers and actors. Um, currently, um, I am um, on Bunked. I'm the I'm one of the showrunners, and there's another woman named Erin who I've been working with, and she and I met on uh, Andy Mack. So we were both writers on Andy Mack, and then they called us up and they said, "Would you guys be?" Um, willing to come and be the showrunners of of Bunked, and we said sure. And so at the same time, uh, Aaron and I are also uh, have written and shot a pilot for a new show, which I don't know if it's going to make it on to the air. I hope so. Um, if it does, you'll have to have me back on your show, and I can talk to you about that one too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if if you let guests come back again. Hopefully, this yeah. is somewhat entertaining. Well, for <laughs> and, sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I would say anybody that just is a lot of fun, I'd like to collaborate with anybody that's funny. Um, for example, um, there is uh, on. Do you, I don't know if you know the show Bunked Maya, but the character Lou. Yeah. Yeah, so so in the new season, in season four, she has become the camp director. And we have a really funny um, episode where the camp director from the rival camp comes in. And she's played by Rainy Rodriguez. Oh. Do, do you remember Rainy yeah. from uh, Austin and Allie? Yeah. <laughs> and so the two of them, uh, uh, Miranda May, who plays Lou, and Rainy, who plays the camp director for the rival camp, the two of them are so funny together, and I, you know, it'll be a, a really great episode once it comes out. I don't know, you know, we've been working on editing it, so it should be out pretty soon. Um, so I get inspired by that, by seeing like you know young actors come in and just be terrific, and then I get excited and and I want to keep working with them. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um. So, do you have any upcoming projects that you can tell us about? Um, well, I did mention the one uh, the one pilot um, that that we have. Um, I guess you would say it's still in development. We're still talking to them. We shot we shot uh, the pilot in June, in early June. Then we did the editing process. Um, and so, you know, there's, and then they, you know, they do what's called focus group testing where they let kids watch it and weigh in. And that's always really helpful to find out what the viewer is thinking. Um, so I don't really have anything more to say about it. Like I said, if they announce that we're going to be going to series, meaning that, that we'll start making it and it'd be on the Disney channel, then I could talk more about it. But until then. It's it's just an uh, let's just call it an upcoming project. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, we tried to get so. the big scoop out of him. We couldn't do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Denver. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what is your biggest pet peeve? Huh? You mean in terms of working on shows? Or the fact that my daughter never does her dishes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anything. That one. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, um, sometimes as a writer, we like for the actors to say, you know, we spend a lot of time writing the scripts and coming up with the jokes and we like them to, sometimes if they don't memorize their lines correctly, then we don't hear the jokes, you know, so, so that it's not a big pet peeve, but I guess it would be, um, you know, just that they say their lines as written one time so we can hear it. And then if it's not funny, we can write them some new material. Um, but I, and I would say this, this other thing uh, would be a pet peeve would be just not being prepared. Hmm. So for, for example, and, and I would say this about, you know, my, my job and, and other things in life, you obviously prepared very well for this interview. You have your, your questions ready um, they're smart questions, and it's been really enjoyable. So I would say that there's a great lesson in that, to just be prepared in whatever kind of work it is you're going to do, schoolwork or, you know, when you grow up and get a job, I, I would say be prepared. Good advice. Yeah. Way more than a pet peeve, just good, solid advice. <laughs> yeah. oh, thank you. <laughs> um, 
So if you could have any song playing to announce your entrance into a room, what song would it be? Oh, boy. Play for the... Hello? Oh, we. Yeah. you uh, said, oh, boy, okay. and then you froze on our screen, and I was like, wow, uh, he's thinking for a while. Yeah. And yeah. you're back now. You're back. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. I, I was going to say, this is more of a joke, Hail to the Chief, which is what they play when the American president enters the room. <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yes. Um, so are there any new shows that you're binge watching right now and any that you'd recommend? Hmm. Let's see. Um... I, this is going to be funny. So for somebody who works in TV, I don't watch a lot of TV. (laughs) I think, I think it's, you know, when I first started out as a writer, I really watched a lot more TV because I wanted to study, especially sitcoms. I wanted to study it and to see how they, how they told their stories and, you know, learn comedy style and learn, you know, joke templates and things like that. But as I've gotten older, um, I do this thing that's called reading books. What? <laughs> I know, crazy, isn't it? Outlandish. So yeah, I don't. Insanity. I don't really have any any uh, good shows to watch. How about you, Maya? Do you have any? Have you been binge watching anything recently? Oh. Uh, right now, we're just watching Friends. Yeah. Um. Classic. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oh, I can't think of any right now. That's yeah. good enough. I mean, that'll yeah. for most uh, you know for anybody that 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 show's appropriate for it'll get you laughing pretty good. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, my my daughter uh, did the same thing a couple of years ago. She sat down and watched all the Friends. <laughs> so, yeah, but I think that's probably more for older kids. What? So yeah. you you study early on? You studied sitcoms? If you don't mind me asking a quick question, Maya. Yeah. You studied sitcoms. Fine, what, go ahead. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> what were what were the shows you did watch when you were watching them that you enjoyed? Um, so when I when I first started uh, thinking about becoming a sitcom writer, it was early '90s, and the way that you would start out in those days would be to you would take a hit show and you would write a sample script for that hit show. Now, nothing would ever happen with that script. It's not like like so. For example. Uh, the first show that I ever wrote, and it's called a spec script, mean, meaning speculative, meaning a sample of your work. And the first, the first one that I did back in those days was a show called The Simpsons, which I think is going to be on for Forever. decades and decades, <laughs> since it already has. And then there was another show called Seinfeld that I wrote, which was, is still in reruns, um, a show called Frasier. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and when I started, I don't think the the Disney Channel might have been up and running, but I don't know if they had their own original programming at that time. So, yeah, that's what you would do. You would watch. So, I would watch shows like that. Um, and cable TV was just really getting started. So, I know I don't look it, but I am very, very old. You don't look <laughs> at it at all, man. Oh, yeah. thank you. You're wearing it well. <laughs> Um, so if you could meet any fictional character that's not a superhero, because that's my next question, um, who would it be? Uh, the first name that pops into mind is Willy Wonka, because candy! (laughs) And a chance to win the candy factory, I mean, come on. That's right. Chocolate factory, specifically. right. (laughs) Willy Wonka. (laughs) Um, that's yeah. That's the first. That's the first time I've heard anybody come close to an answer like that. That was awesome. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, if you could be any superhero, which one would you be, and why? Um, I will go with Batman, and only because um, when I was a little boy, uh, there was a. You know, they, we didn't. They didn't make shows just for kids in those days. So you had to watch shows that were for adults. But they did have this one show on that I discovered um, called Batman, and it was a live action version, and it was really kind of silly. 
and it was on when I was probably about seven years old, seven or eight years old, and they would have two episodes on every week, and I just thought that was so cool. So the one episode would end, and Batman and Robin would be like maybe on a conveyor belt getting ready to be ripped apart by a saw or something, and you're like, oh, my God, how are they going to – how are they going to be rescued? And then, then the announcer would say, come back tomorrow night, same bad time, same bad channel. And then, of course, you know, when you're seven, 24 hours seems like forever. And then, so then the next night, I always enjoyed the second episode in the two because then Batman and Robin would escape always and they would, uh, you know, catch the, cr- the crooks. And uh, so, yeah, I, definitely Batman. Oh, cool. And Adam West, I mean, come on. That's right. <laughs> he was the best. <laughs> You're just going all superhero. I, uh, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, do you have a motto or a quotation that you live by? Um, hmm. I am going to... I, I don't. That I, that I feel like is mine. But the first one that came to mind when you said that is be kind. Mm. And I feel like if I can try to do that in how I lead my life and how I interact with people, that that's a really good place to start. I like that. Thank you. So true. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you have a motto? Huh. I don't know. I don't know. Think, there are yeah. like a bunch of different quotes that I really like, but yeah, I don't know. My mom always says, um, she says, let your freak flag fly. So I think yeah. I'm going to go with that. <laughs> that. That's a good one, too. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, so my last question for you is, who do you consider to be a real life superhero and why? Uh, hmm. Um, a real life superhero. I would say anybody that does something in service of other people. So perhaps a fire, a firefighter, or a police officer, or a doctor, or a nurse. Um, anybody that does something that helps people, um, you know, sometimes I'll say about my job that it's a really silly job. I mean, we sit in a room, we complain that lunch isn't there yet. We talk about candy, we make up jokes (laughs) and, and I think, well, it's it's not really that, it's not that important of a job. And then sometimes people will say to me, you know, it's, uh, you're making people laugh Mm -hmm. and that's a nice Mm -hmm. thing. So I would, I would say, yeah, people who can help other people. And um, I'm going to say today, Maya, you're my superhero. All right. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, get that, get that girl a cape. <laughs> she, has her own, she has her own shirt. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, yes, yeah, I see groove. that. Wow, that is so cool. <laughs> thank I you. I love it. Not everybody <laughs> thank has you. that. Yeah. <laughs> That is awesome. Phil Baker, dude, thank you so much for calling in and spending some time with us. My pleasure. Yeah. Great to meet you both. You and too. thank you, thank you, Maya. That was a great interview. Thank you. <laughs> All, right. All right. Phil, anytime okay. you're back in the Denver area, swing by the Seacrest studio. Love to have you I, in. Chat a little bit I, more. I will do it. All right. All right. See you later. Okay. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>